wonderful to be here with both of you. Thank you, of course, Carolina Link for uh, sharing your incredible film with us and being here today to talk to us about it. And thank you, Elizabeth von Wagner, for um, joining us to you know, add your perspective to the conversation as well. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to start with the first question, and I should just say up front that I didn't watch this film with a completely clean slate the way I think the audiences here will start, because I know that this film is based on a very well-loved book that um, many people in Germany are familiar with. Um, what perhaps the viewers here in the Boston and New England area don't know is that this book was written by a woman called Judith Kerr, and it's based on her personal experience and it's been read by just a huge number of middle school age children in Germany when they receive Holocaust education in their schools. This book was originally written in English and then in 1971, and then it was translated into German in 1973. And it immediately received a lot of recognition, awards, and it was also then integrated into school curricula. I was wondering, um, Carolina Link, when you first encountered the story and when you decided that you wanted to make it into a film. Yeah, I, I, we really, we had to read it at school uh, when I was about 11 years old. So I was born 64. So that was, yeah, 75. Uh, I think it was in the, like you say, in the curriculum and we had to read it. I was a little bit afraid of the book at the beginning because I thought, oh my God, we were still young. And, and also our parents were afraid that, that, might, that this might be shocking and overwhelming for smaller children. And I was so grateful for you did care uh, to you did care that um, the book was not shocking and still um, it took the whole subject matter very seriously. It is not, uh, um, it, it is not a, a, a book that you cannot read in that age because it is so horrifying and so uh, cruel. You don't really see any scene that is very brutal and uh, like, like other, other literature or movies you might read or see uh, from that time. Um, but nevertheless, I think it, it moved me. I remember it moved me very, very much because it doesn't play um, the situation down from the family. Even though nothing horrible happens, it goes very, very deep. And I think that's the art of Judith Kerr, how she um, managed to, to, to describe that um, journey of that family as a huge adventure and still there's this sadness and melancholy melancholy uh, underneath everything that uh, makes even children who read the book and see the movie i think feel what it means to lose your home to lose your language and to lose a, a place where you are allowed to be and to be happy yeah i think i think you do that really well we see i mean i i, I haven't read the book and um and I was really interested in sort of your development in the film of that arc um, and sort of seeing Anna begin to recognize um, what's going on around her and, you know, starting in the scene where the, um, where she's being chased in this carnival and she sort of talks about the Nazi youth as though they're wearing costumes and then sort of the understanding that it's something larger as the film and even the way she and her brother sort of swap roles as caretakers when she arrives in Paris and begins to um, sort of tell her parents that the apartment's fine and her mother's cooking is good. Um, we see these, this sort of reckoning. Um, was that in the book or did you sort of create that arc um, in your own narrative storytelling? For me, uh, yeah, that's interesting because for many years, um, uh, German film directors or, or film producers mainly tried to uh, make a movie out of that book. And um, there was a TV uh, film, I think, um, like 20 years ago, uh, that were two times 90 minutes and that was very close to the original novel. And I, for my understanding or for my taste, it didn't work so well because in the book, literature is different than movies and film, of course, it has a different uh, way it works. And in that TV film, I think one thing happened after the other and it didn't really go very, it didn't really get close to, to the viewer for me. 
and 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 I talked with Judith Kerr before. Unfortunately, she she died and never could see the movie. But we talked a lot about the screenplay, and I always asked her permission to do changes, little changes um, on the book, because I think. I, I never really wanted to make make a plot driven uh, movie. I knew that the strength of that book is that nothing really horrible happens, and still it is very moving and moving and 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 uh, and doesn't play the situation down. But still, you need I needed to invent a little, a few details, like for example. Um, uh, uh, the idea with the the calendar that 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 is a very small thing, but it is very important for the emotion. I think that Anna says she's in Switzerland. She makes a calendar where she crosses the days until she goes back home. Until at the end of the movie, she understands I can throw that calendar away uh, just as well because we're never going to go home anymore. And and those are the little fine red threads that you. Um, how do you say, planned in, in, in a screenplay that say or tell the audience what it's really about. It's about understanding and becoming to understand that there is no way back. And that is very, very, very sad. And that must be sad enough. Uh, and I don't have to pep it up with uh, outside action. I was thinking about the, in the scene in Switzerland where she walks down the middle of the aisle and the kids laugh at her because the boys usually do that and and then thinking about how her brother calls her um little man um there's some interesting gender stuff in the film w was that intentional and like what were you what were you hoping to sort of bring up with that this is really all from Judith Kerr's book I was surprised because I thought of a school in a village in Switzerland at that time uh, why would they behave like that? I couldn't even believe it. But I asked you, Karen, she said oh, she remembers it. I mean, the memory is a tricky thing. Maybe she remembers something that wasn't 100%. She was quite, she was already, I think, uh, uh, how old was she? About 50 when she wrote the book. So some things might not have been 100% true, but she remembers that there were weird habits. And uh, I think um, one of that habit was that boys and girls in the Swiss school didn't really play together or they had different rules um no I, I just wanted maybe i wanted to show a little girl and by choosing riva to play it a little girl that has a, a strong will and that is determined to fight injustice and and to stand up for her uh, rights in in the swiss school she's intimidated still but uh, she becomes courageous and she she has a lot of strength and and i think um yeah, maybe I wanted to show the audience, the children, that uh, as a little girl, you can be a Pippi Langstrumpf and be, you know, be a tough little girl. I like <laughs> little girls like that. I, I, my girl in Pünktchen and Anton in that other Kästner, um, uh, Kästner, Erich Kästner movie, uh, Pünktchen is a very outspoken and very tough little girl as well. Yeah. No, and it's, I mean, again, it's interesting to see, you know, her sort of, teach the boys how to do cartwheels. And then, of course, um, her brother sort of becoming a little less, um, a little less confident as the film goes on. And, you know, with the scene with the, the pencils in, in Paris and her learning to sort of take, take control, I think is, is a really nice thing to yeah. watch in the film. Yeah, uh, she's a smart little cookie. And I think Judith Kerr was very smart too. She was she was a very um, intelligent little girl, and 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 she she yeah she stood up for what was important to her. <laughs> it's it's funny that you mentioned you know bringing books to the screen because if you look at your filmography, this isn't the first time you've done that. Um, you also made a film adaptation of the much loved children's book Pringchen and Anton, which is another story that told out of a child's perspective. And um, we were wondering, um, what is it about the child's perspective that you find so fascinating? Sometimes I think children help us to see uh, things unprejudiced and, and quite clear. I think um, for Anna, most of her life is the future. For her parents, a lot is in the back, yeah? And children are open to the future because they look forward to the future. They have everything in front of them. And uh, also in my movie, Nowhere in Africa, when that little nine-year-old girl went to Kenya, 
she was excited about it. She, she thought, wow, when I grow up in Kenya now, and, and Anna is excited about uh, her journey. She, she, she's curious, how is Switzerland? How is Paris? And I think this uh, being unprejudiced and, and, and uh, um, just being open to everything that happens with, and all the people that she meets, the foreigners and the new impressions, uh, that is something we can learn from children, and still it is painful, still it is hard for her, but um, she tries to to be as open as possible, or she doesn't even try, She that's how children are, you know, they are open to the present tense and time and the, and the future. And I think Alfred Kerr, the father of Judith Kerr, and also uh, in, in, the, in her book, the father, he did a very good job in, in supporting that childlike um, attitude that he always says to, uh, said to them, to both children, um, look what lies in front of you. See what what is there. It's it's it, 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 yes, we we lost our home, but there is a lot you can see. And if you only look in the back room mirror in the back, then you will miss a lot of beautiful things that are happening today and tomorrow. So look in front, look in the future. Don't look back. And so he supported uh, that. Uh, openness a lot from his children. You mentioned your other film, uh, Nowhere in Africa, um, which was from 2001 and won the Oscar for Best Foreign Film that year. And um, this is the second time then with this film that you've made a, a film about um, a family forced into exile by the Nazi regime. And in that film, Nowhere to Africa, the family was also forced to flee. Um, I was wondering what it was like for you to revisit um, this time time period again, now 18 years later, after the film you made in 2001. Yeah, that was really um, a moment where I thought, do I really want to make this movie? Because so many uh, situations were a little bit similar to No One Africa, even though one time they went to Kenya and in the other story they stay in Europe. But still, uh, of course, it has a lot of um, similarities and um, uh, the mixed feelings that you have when when you have a beautiful time, but you know that it's 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 hell in Germany, and and your dear ones, your loved ones, um, are at home and and might be in danger. Uh, that was in both stories very uh, emotional and very strong, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, every story is individual. I think um, when Hitler stole Pink Rabbit is 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 it's a definitely a children's book. I didn't really want to make it a, a children's film. I think it's a film. I hope that speaks also to grown ups. And No One Africa was not at all a children's film. So. Um, I like the I like the unusual perspective from Judith Kerr on her own childhood, and I like the optimism in that story and the 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 child. I don't want to say childish because I, in German it's it's negative a negative negative thing to say, but the childlike perspective on that time I thought was very unique in the book from Judith Kerr. Yeah, I mean I do think it's interesting because the film felt very relevant to today. Um, Anna often talks about being a refugee. I don't know what the word was in, in German because I don't speak German, but um, the word Flüchtling. refugee. Yes, Flüchtling. Yeah. Flüchtling. Uh -huh. I, I shouldn't have attempted that, but um, um, refugee, I mean, obviously we're talking a lot about refugees now. I also thought there was a moment where um, Anna's father said to her, you know, we went to her brother, we need to be better. We need to, as Jews, we need to show that we're smarter, we're more capable, we're, we're more polite, um, which I think, you know, here in the US is a big part of the way uh, people of color are talking about their experience and how, how they're, they need to sort of present to the world. Um, so the film felt, you know, even though it was 18 years, I wonder why, why this film now and sort of what the message is, was it an intentional choice to talk about refugees and, and how does that sort of relate to, to today's world? Yeah, I mean, that it became so relevant. I didn't know when I started writing the screenplay and it became more relevant, I think, uh, to our times, uh, the deeper we went into making the movie. Uh, but this is what I, um, I found interesting too, that, you know, the young people in Germany, they, um, uh, I think they associate refugees with people from very poor countries. You know, they think refugees come from uh, 
uh, Africa, they come from the Middle East, or um, they come from from uh, countries that they know are most of the time very poor, and and there's war, and there's always conflict, and has always been since those children live. You know, they know nothing about certain areas of the world than poverty, hunger, and war. And when pil children from or when people from those areas come. Uh, they know, oh, these are those poor people, they are refugees. What I thought was interesting in that book and that story is that Anna is really a girl from our middle. She is just a girl like any child that is sitting in the, in the movie theater. She has uh, a loving family. She has a beautiful home. Uh, nothing is missing. The father is an intellectual. He's, he's, he's smart. They have a nice house. They have everything. And from one day to the other, without doing anything, you know, without even knowing, really knowing that she's Jewish because they were not religious, the care family. Um, uh, from one day to the other, they are told that they have to leave the country. And I think for the younger audience, for children to see that, you know, you could be, you could be the one. If the times are not right, then you could be the one. And from one day to the other, somebody comes, some force comes, some government and says, you have to go. And, and I think uh, that is important that uh, young people understand it is so unjust. It, it can be, you know, you don't need to be a bad person to be in that situation. And uh, the un, unjustment about that and how unfair it is, uh, I think that is something that uh, children came to me and talked with me about. Why did they really have to leave? What did that father do and why? And that is so unfair and, and she could never come back. And when did she come back? And, you know, because it feels like it happens to you. And that's what I liked about the book. And I thought that's important for children to see. I mean, it's, it's interesting talking about their, their sort of apart, having wealth and, and losing it. And I noticed the set design and the, you know, the apartment in, in Germany didn't a lot of the films I've seen that take place, you know, about families having to leave during the Holocaust war show these really sort of stuffy looking of houses when there's wealth and, and it looked modern in a way that I thought, you know, was clearly reflected that it could be now it could be anyone. The care family was um, um, a modern family, you know, they were uh, cultural interested, they were open minded, they were liberal. And I think uh, that's what we also try to uh, express in the in the set design in that house in Berlin. I looked at that setting also as I'm familiar with Berlin and it was such a typical Berlin house in a way um, mm -hmm. and, and how beautiful it was. Um, that kind of brings me back to, um, you know, the Berlin setting, the actress who played Anna and um, what it was like for you working with children. I was interested to find out and read that the actress who plays Anna, um, Riva Krimalovsky, am I pronouncing her name? Yes. Probably actually attends the same school that um, Judith Kerr attended as a child, um, which I thought was such an interesting coincidence. And I was wondering if you had anything to say about how that coincidence might have affected her performance. Mm. I, I don't know if that was important to Riva. Oh, maybe, yes, it was important because, of course, she heard the name Judith Kerr many times and, they, and she read the book before she knew that she would ever play in that movie. And for her, it was, of course, a, a a bummer that she was selected from the casting or she came into the room when we did the casting and she said um i go to the uh, school where you did care went to and i i know the book already i read it already at school and 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 so she was excited about it but she really wanted to meet you care and unfortunately that wasn't possible anymore she wanted to show her the movie and she wanted to ask her did i do it right and uh, that was important to her and, and i think um uh, since Riva is Jewish and she comes from a Jewish family and so even though the family didn't talk that much about the Holocaust with the children yet she knows um, of course from from many many family get-togethers and all that that there was this time that horrible time and so uh, I, I, I could I, I felt even on, in the casting I felt how much that time compared to other children in that age meant already to Riva that she has something inside her that knows 
this is not funny. This is not, not nothing, you know, this is really, really deep and sad and horrible. And in some scenes when we were filming, she was extremely deep in the situation. And uh, that was amazing for me to see because I work a lot with children and Riva has that talent to really sink into the moment. Like for example, when uh, um, uh, that friend from Berlin shows up in Paris and he gives the, the clock to the family from Uncle Julius. I didn't ask Riva to cry in that moment. I just told her to blow the, the, the clock again, the watch again, uh, like she did for Uncle Julius to open it. And she started crying because she uh, associated with that whole uh, situation so much. And I didn't even ask her to do it. It came up in came up by by her understanding of of the moment yeah well I, I was curious about the casting I mean you mentioned that she came into the room and you know had, had told you that she knew this story and how did you you say you I mean you've obviously worked with children before and said you enjoy it but what what is the casting like working with both the children and the adults in the film and and how is working with children different I'm always looking when I when I have such a big part for a child, I'm always looking for children who have never filmed anything before, because I think the first time they do a movie, uh, they have that complete openness and innocence. They don't see they are not allowed to see the rushes, the rushes. I don't show them anything oh. and when they sneak behind the 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 video i always tell them to to go to not l see themselves because even i mean even little girls they start to oh that's how i look and i don't like my hair and whoop whoop and i never uh i never find that complete openness and um easiness uh, with children who already shot a lot of movies then they have that certain um artificial uh, approach and they have an opinion about things and they have an opinion about themselves and how they speak or do I like my voice or whatever. And I always try to find natural kids who completely trust me. Of course, I, I do my part so that we have a good relationship. We have to get to know each other before we make the movie together. And then um, I tell them pretty exact what I, I like to, 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 to see in the scene and how they could maybe do it. But, um, the more we get comfortable with each other, you know, the more they know they can do it and they do a very good job, the more they, it all becomes, uh, f how do you say, um, uh, fluent, you know, they, they, they suggest and they act and they, it's, it's, it's like a game for them. The most mm -hmm. important thing is that they are right, that the casting is right and that they get after the first day of filming the feeling, Caroline, Caroline is happy with me, I can do it. And I'm, I do a good job and I, you know, I give them a lot of confidence on the first day. It's very important that they believe I, they can do it and they always enjoy it. And, and, and Riva knew, I'm pretty good at that. I, I think I'm good. <laughs> and uh -huh. she, she really was. Yeah. Did, were yeah. you with her when she saw the film, the finished film? Yes. Yes. I showed it to her and her family. It was difficult for her family, uh, for reasons of family history and stuff, to see that. And for the grandparents, it was quite overwhelming. But um, Riva, yeah, she was, the first time she saw it, she was, I mean, she just said, my face so big on the screen. <laughs> she was really in, overwhelmed by, by, by the size of the mm. screen. All that, yeah. I often get asked, you know, with my work here at the consulate by my partners here in New England, you know, how does Germany cover the Holocaust in schools? Um, so you're making this film obviously helps me because I can point to the film and say, you can see that this, this kind of story is the story that is being told in German schools. Um, did you feel that um, making this book into a film would also help this history reach an even broad, broader audience? Um, and maybe in a larger sense, who do you hope this film will reach? Um, I didn't really make this movie only for children and young people. I also made it for their grandparents and their parents. And I tried to reach the whole families with that, not for commercial reasons, but because I think this is a movie where people, generations can go together to the movie theater and, and talk about
about that time and about uh, that subject matter and about what they felt. And I think it's nice if nobody in, is under, how do you say, unterfordert? What does that mean in English? Under-challenged. <laughs> Under-challenged, you know, in a movie like that. I think uh, that movie or that story can be interesting for, for older people, grandparents, parents and children. Um, I, I, the, the Holocaust education in Germany doesn't happen when children are nine or 10 years old. So Riva read the book because she goes to that certain school. Uh, usually uh, children, young people are much older when they start to learn uh, about a Holocaust and the um, uh, Second World War and, and the Nazi regime. Um, so um, I know Jewish families and one Jewish uh, grandfather, you know, I, I know very well, he was always very sad that there are children who are 12, 13, 14 years, and they don't know anything about the Second World War, they, or at least not enough. So um, maybe this movie makes it possible that younger children get an idea of the time, you can start, you can start talking with them about the time, without shocking them too much with all the details. That's what children do a little bit later. So I, I think it's obligatory, is that a word? Obligatory. Obligatory. obligatory to go to a concentration camp, to see the sites of the concentration camp. At least in Bavaria, every child has to go, but, but not until they're, I think, 15 or something like that. I, it's something we're certainly encouraging uh, people to do during the festival is to watch and have dialogues across generations with this film because, um, I think, it, I think what's nice about the film is it allows people an entry point to have a deeper conversation mm -hmm. to meet people at their own level. And, and it is, you know, and as you said, it, it's not, it doesn't, while I'm sure it's appropriate for children, it also is, is a film that um, is for adults and, I, you know, is, is a beautiful film and with depth of character. So um, I think it's really important to find, pe you know, things that, that can inspire conversation. And this is a film that certainly, I think, can inspire cross-generational dialogue. Yeah, um, I think so. Mm -hmm. I'm curious of the, of the reactions to the film. I think um, maybe the reaction to the film in Germany as opposed to maybe what you might be expecting here. I think um, we are showing this film, let's say, in a world that, um, you know, there's a lot of people have a lot of concerns. Um, I know, you know, working at the consulate, we, we have part of our mission is to really talk a lot about the Holocaust and, you know, about their movements, you know, to distort what happened, uh, what had distortion and denial even of the Holocaust. And I'm wondering if this kind of uptick that we're seeing in the world and anti-Semitic, you know, acts, if that might have been part of your motivation in making the film? Was that something that you were thinking about? You know, I didn't initiate the, the, the idea to make that movie. It was offered by me. You know, the producers, I really can't take that credit. The producers bought the rights and they tried to make it for a long time. And they came to me and they said, would you like to try to write that screenplay? Because it hasn't really worked so far. And then I tried it and then we did it together, you know. So I can't really not put that on my, uh, on my shoulders that I decided to make this movie today in, that, in, in our times. You know, the, the challenge was really, and that was, uh, was something that uh, we discussed a lot here, is the movie too nice for such a serious subject matter, you yeah. know? Um, if I, I was very grateful to Judith Kerr because she said in every interview, she said, um, this was the most beautiful time of my life. And, and if she, how do you say that sentence right? I never get the, the grammar right in English. If she wouldn't have said that, <laughs> um, then it would have been hard for me to invent that because you cannot invent a person, a Jewish person who, who lost so much in the, in, in, the, in the Second World War in the time of the Nazi regime uh, that afterwards she would say, when I look back, it was the most beautiful time of my life. How can she say that? But what she meant was, I was so close with my family, we felt so, so whole as a family. And as long as my father and my mother were with me, 
and we saw the world and traveled, nothing, I felt nothing can happen to me. So that was the credit for that wonderful parents, the parents who took care of their children and didn't frighten them the whole time, I think. But some critics, even in one uh, newspaper, the headline was a feel good movie about, um, uh, about, the, about the Nazi times. And of course, uh, yeah, is, is that allowed? Is that positive? But uh, I think most of the critics and most of the journalists, they um, appreciated or they, they saw that uh, the film doesn't play the, the emotions down. I mean, it, didn't, it doesn't pretend that everything is okay. It's just they were not physically threatened but still they lost um, their home, you know? And so that is the story that you did care told and that is in the book and that is what we did yeah i mean she does have a child a child's perspective and i think you know clearly with her parents protecting her but we also see her drawing these disaster pictures i think there's always this underlying thread of of what's happening in the foreground and what's happening in the background yeah when you read the biography of um alfred Kerr, you realize that it, it has not at all been as uh, harmless as you might think after reading the book from Judith Kerr because he describes uh, very strongly his um, his fear, his poverty. They didn't really have any income for a very long time and his disappointment that nobody helped, that nobody in Germany helped, that he couldn't ask anybody uh, for money. Like he says in the film, and I took that in because it was important to me, he said, people who were so eager to get in contact with me when I was still famous in Germany and who, who did everything to get my appreciation as a critic, as a theater critic, they don't even reply to me anymore when I write them and I ask them for a little amount or, or, or help. You know, they, they, they didn't talk to me anymore. And he, was, he felt humiliated and he felt and he felt hurt and he tried to hide that from his children but i tried to show it a little bit in some scenes especially with um, like the man he meets in the synagogue and stuff um, um that he um has a, had a huge problem with his um his, his, his with with the reactions that came from germany and from people who didn't help him at all you do get the sense that there are different conversations happening with the kids in the room and with the parents privately and, and the way yeah. they talk, you know, him taking um, his son out for, for, for escargot when he, when they can't buy a light bulb and what, what's the presentation of, of what's going on with the family versus what's actually happening in the adult world is very clear, yeah. I think, in your film. So that was already much more than there is in the novel from Judith Kerr because she doesn't have those scenes at all. And I, 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 when I read the book again to, to make the screenplay, I thought, okay, a little bit, we need a little bit more of the concerns from the parent because it cannot be as sunny and as harm, and harmless as she remembers it. And I, I, don't even rem, I don't even believe quite that with 10 years she wouldn't realize living with her parents in such a small apartment in Paris, for example, how big the, the, the financial pressure was, even if the parents did their best to hide it, you know? So um, uh, I thought uh, maybe she forgot that. You did care, forgot that. She didn't want to talk about it in her book, you know? She, but she remembers the time as a beautiful time with her beloved parents, especially her beloved father. Has the film been shown in theaters in Germany? Oh yeah, it last yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. And what was what was the reception in Germany and, and It was very positive. Yeah, we did yeah. very well. Fortunately, until uh, the lockdown, uh, then we we had a cut. It could have been longer in the theater, especially we have um, um, uh, school screenings. A lot of you know, there was this um, so-called uh, cinema school week. And the movie was booked out for many weeks. And unfortunately, mm. this couldn't happen anymore. But the movie was very well received. And uh, the critics and also the audience was very moved by it. If I can say I, that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing, um, to sharing it with our audience here. And uh, when they're watching this, they will have seen it. So um, I'll be sure to share their reactions with you as well. Um, thank you.
And we wish we could have brought you here to Boston to watch it and that we could all be together in a theater. Unfortunately, this year, everybody's watching from their own home screens. But yeah, um, I would have loved to come. I love Boston. I was there in the, I celebrated uh, the, how do you say, the, the New Year 2000 there. Oh, in, wow. We're yeah. always welcome to come. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful, Boston. I like it a lot. Yeah, oh, I hear that. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. an honor to speak with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your time.